director of national intelligence came out with a report today saying that Vladimir Putin authorized operations during the election to under, denigrate you, support President Trump, undermine our elections, divide our society. What price must he pay? He will pay a price. I, we had a long talk, he and I. We've, I, I know him relatively well. And I, the conversation started off. I said, I know you and you know me. If I establish this occurred, then be prepared. You said you know he doesn't have a soul. I did say that to him, yes. And, to, and his response was, we understand one another. I wasn't being a wise guy. I was alone with him in his office. That's how it came about. It was when President Bush had said, I've looked in his eyes and saw a soul. I said, look in your eyes, and I don't think you have a soul. And looked back at me and said, we understand each other. Look, most important thing dealing with foreign leaders, in my experience, and I've dealt with an awful lot of them over my career, is just know the other guy. So you know Vladimir Putin. You think he's a killer? Mm-hmm. I do. So what price must he pay? The price he's going to pay, well, you'll see shortly. I'm not going to... There's... By the way, we ought to be able that old, that trite expression, walk and chew gum at the same time. There are places where it's in our mutual interest to, to uh, work together. That's why... Why do I feel like it's taboo or that we're not supposed to talk about Joe Biden's um, possible deteriorating health? Now, for those who follow the channel, you know I'm not really big into politics. I don't really cover it hell. You know, I read articles more than I actually watch the mainstream media. And yes, I am one of those Americans who watch all news. I watch Fox News. I watch CNN. I watch MSNB. I watch OAN. I I like to read. I like to to make sure that I'm not just listening to what people tell me, that I'm actually doing my own independent research. So before we go on, let's go to Vladimir Putin's response. Now, remember, in media, things can always be distorted and, you know, put out of context. But let's try this here. Please subscribe, take your time out, like the video. I personally feel that Joe Biden is not in a situation to be saying shit or talking anything about any of the foreign leaders, especially when he's not having press conferences. Or if there's questions that are not being addressed about, like if he's mentally capable, the man is what, 78 years old? He's so stupid. Друг с другом. Мы говорили так. Мы действительно, как он сказал, мы с ним лично знакомы. И что бы я ему ответил? Я бы сказал ему, будьте здоровы. Я желаю ему здоровья. Говорю это без иронии, без шуток. Руководство Соединенных Штатов в целом настроено иметь с нами определенные отношения, но по тем вопросам, которые представляют интерес для самих Соединенных Штатов и на их условиях. Мы, хоть они думают, что мы такие же, как они, но мы другие люди. У нас другой генетический и культурно-нравственный код. Но мы умеем отстаивать свои собственные интересы. И мы будем с ними работать. Но в тех областях, в которых мы сами заинтересованы, и на тех условиях, которые мы считаем выгодными для себя. И им придется с этим считаться. Им придется с этим считаться, несмотря на э, все попытки остановить наше развитие, несмотря на, на санкции, оскорбления. Им придется с этим считаться. Now, to me, that's not no, you know, he's saying it's not a joke or whatever, but wishing somebody good health, especially when, like, it's being talked about. You go on social media, you watch news networks outside of some news networks, they're not bringing it up, but it's being talked about. Something seems wrong with my dude that he can't handle off the cuff or off or, 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 or off the fly questioning and answering. It just don't seem like he got it. And I'm like, why do people, why are people scared to talk about it? I mean, oh, well, that's his Uncle Joe. And, you know, people need to leave him alone. Or you know what really bugs me? When people say, well, Trump did this and Trump did that. 
that's a real weak mindset to have that finger pointing shit that shit don't get you nowhere deal with what the problem is today trump is gone you can't keep blaming that shit on him and don't get me start started on what i've learned about the border crisis where they just told them come on over we'll take care of you but what i've known and and what i'm what i've learned what i'm learning is that in urban neighborhoods and urban communities they don't really give a fuck about this type of shit they listen to what mainstream media says and they just go with it like for example this right here no matter if they're saying it's debunked or not it's still fishy this shit look fishy for those who didn't see it let me see if you catch it not at the moment have you decided when you're able to share thoughts with other countries is it allies or neighbors first who will be the first country to get u.s vaccine i've been talking with several countries already well i'll let you know that very shortly now i must say there are photos and everything but this shit just don't seem right now, the conspiracy is, or people think that Joe Biden, you know, that it was a green screen, that the people wasn't really there. So, for example, if you look at this, look at it again if you haven't, if you, if you see what I'm talking about. Now, watch the, the great boom mic. Something is fishy. It just seemed fishy. Now, people are saying that it's distortion and... You know, because, you know, uh, the, the how furry it is and the camera don't pick it up right or whatever. It just looks fishy. So it's being said that Putin wants to have a phone call with um, Joe Biden. My honest opinion is Joe Biden is looking weak out here. And these other foreign leaders are like, yo, I want to debate him because I'm, uh, you know, chew him up. You know, they, I, don't, I just don't think they mentally I just don't think they believe he mentally has it in him to be able just to answer off the cuff questions. Without stumbling over his words, he probably didn't even mean to say what he said about Putin. Some people, just because, you know, you're rich and because you get the best health care, still you have a brain. You know, I'm surprised that Joe made it through, you know, the, the press conferences with Trump. Hard for me to believe he wasn't on PEDs. Hey, let's listen to the rest of this. Does President Biden regret calling Vladimir Putin a killer? No, the president gave a direct answer to a direct question. The White House on Thursday stood by an assertion made by President Joe Biden during a national television interview this week about Russian leader Vladimir Putin. When asked in an ABC interview if he believed Putin was a killer, Biden said, I do. Putin snapped back Thursday by saying, it takes one to know one, arguing that every nation has to contend with bloody events and suggesting Biden was being hypocritical. And you know I remember in my childhood, when we argued in the courtyard, we used to say, it takes one to know one. And that's not a coincidence. Not just a children saying or joke. It has deep psychological meaning. We always see our own traits in other people and think they are like how we really are. Biden in the ABC interview also recalled once telling let me stop right there. That is true because a liar thinks that everybody lies. A thief thinks that everybody th like will steal. You see what I'm saying? People think like that. Putin, he had no soul. Oh Lord, look at me agreeing with a foreign leader. For get in trouble. Meddling in the November 2020 U.S. presidential election, something the Kremlin denies. Putin's response Thursday also included a somewhat ominous message for Biden as he wished the U.S. president good health in an apparent reference to Biden's age of 78. As he said, we know each other personally. What would I reply to him? I would say, I wish you health. I wish you health. I say that without any irony or joke. 
Later on Thursday, Putin proposed he and Biden talk as soon as Friday or Monday, saying he wanted the discussion to be, quote, live online without any delay. Russia is preparing to be hit by a new round of U.S. sanctions in the coming days over the alleged election meddling. Bro, he just called my man out. So now when you're like listening to that and then you see a press conference that Joe Biden did at three, excuse me, move this out the way. At 3.31 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, right now it's 6.05 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, and he makes a blunder like this. Let me just let you listen in. And I don't mean to be roasting Joe about this, but people got to talk about it. Something is wrong. The hardest hit and suffered the most, especially black, Latino, Native American, and rural communities. This is really important because we believe that speed and efficiency must be matched with fairness and equity. Now, when President Harris and I took uh, a virtual tour of a vaccination center in Arizona not long ago, one of the nurses on that, on that tour injecting people, giving vaccinations, said that each shot was like administering a dose of hope. A dose of hope. That's how she phrased it. Behind these 100 million shots are millions of lives changed when people receive that dose of hope. Grandparents can hug their grandchildren. The man's having a hard time. And it doesn't help that, you know, I got to be honest with you. When a Joe Biden press conference comes on, I'm watching. I'm looking at everything because I'm thinking like, man, am I going crazy? Like, you know, because I'm looking for like green screens and shit. I'm looking for like little distortions. You know, I'm looking for like the glare in his eye to see if it's like a teleprompter. Why am I doing this? Crazy, man. So I'm going to be following this. I'm going to, I, we know he's not going to accept Putin's uh, joint. I wouldn't either if I was him as well, but I'm T-Street Controversy. Please subscribe.